Good morning all, post has arrived, so it's another post bag. Let's start with this one, uh, scissors today, because uh, my knife broke. And it's an Arduino Pro Mini, but uh, this one's a bit different. It's got two rows of pins down one end. Now, very helpfully on the back, they've marked what these two rows of pins are. And uh, this block of four here are A4, A5, A6, and A7. A4 and A5, of course, being I squared C. This block of six here, you may recognize because uh, it's laid out in exactly the same arrangement as the ISP header. So this is a Pro Mini with uh, an accessible programming header so that you can actually reprogram the chip, put a new bootloader in or program programs without using the Arduino IDE. Now let's just do a quick check between uh, some searched uh, ISP header graphics on my computer monitor and the unit itself. Uh, VCC and MISO are at the top. Now you can see on the Pro Mini that they're actually the other way around. On the Pro Mini, VCC top left, MISO top right. It's the other way around on the uh, computer monitor. But that's because this thing is meant to be accessed from the top but I wanted to see the uh, silk screen on the bottom. S clock and Mozzie are the middle two and ground and reset are the bottom two. Yes, so they certainly tie up uh, with the ISP headers, uh, albeit they're the wrong way around left to right. Now, like I say, you'd access this block of six uh, from the front side, so you'd turn that round. Although I have to say, that that switch is very close to that row of pins. So let me just see if I can fit a header in there. Well, it's a bit of a tight fit. Uh, it kind of does fit, but it's leaning over at an angle. Uh, you might possibly be able, to be able to do it if you shave a little bit of this plastic away from the header pins. So yeah, it is all a bit tight, but uh, yeah, you could do it if you really wanted to. So what do other Pro Minis have on this far end? Well, this one has nothing because the switch is set right up at the edge of the board. Although there are four holes here set in, so they're probably A4 and A5, A6 and A7, not necessarily in that order. Uh, this one has ground A6 and A7, and then these two holes that are set in are probably A4 and A5. Uh, this one actually has VCC ground A7 and A6. Are they the opposite way around? Yeah, they are to that one. Again, A4 and A5, which are the I squared C pins, are up there on these two holes that are set in. And this is the one I've just received, which has the full ISP uh, set of six header here. Uh, where was it? Yes. Uh, okay, well, it's at this, these bottom six. And then the four pins here are A4, A5, A6, and A7. So why did I buy this Pro Mini? I don't specifically want the uh, ISP header. But what I do want are the four connections for these little OLEDs and I wanted them over on one side of the board so that I can sandwich the OLED on top of the Pro Mini. And so I need uh, ground VCC, SCL and SDA and here I've got ground VCC, A4 and A5. Now I've started remembering that SDA is A4 because four is the fourth letter of the alphabet, so the four ties up with the D. The C doesn't tie up with the five, but that doesn't really matter. Uh, so the sequence isn't quite right. Uh, ground VCC, ground VCC, SDA will be A4, and SCL will be A5, but it's pretty good. Now, I actually bought two of this type of Pro Mini, so let's just open the other one. Uh, I assume that's what this is before I go to uh, eBay on the PC. And uh, yeah, this is another one from another seller. I bought two just in case there were any uh, significant differences. Maybe the pins laid out in a different order. I doubt that's gonna be the case. And at first glance, it doesn't look like that switch is any less close to the row of pins. Let's have a closer look. Uh, so now on the back, they are identical in the arrangement of pins, as you'd expect them to be. Uh, on the front, yeah, they're very similar. And as I say, the switch is similarly close to that row of pins. They are fairly different though, these two. If you look from the side, you'll see how. One of them is 
massively thinner than the other one. Now, unfortunately, I've mixed them up. I think the second one I opened was the really thin one. I'll see if I can identify who's who. But look at the difference in uh, PCB thickness. This one's ultra thin. That could be useful, but it might also be uh, a disadvantage. And this one's on full thickness, uh, well, probably FR4 fiberglass board. Right, it seems you get what you pay for. Um, the thicker one was this top one, $2.18. Uh, free shipping, yeah, free shipping. And the thinner one, the top one is also tracked. The thinner one was this lower one, $1.88 free shipping. So let's go through to those listings. Uh, okay, so this was the thicker one, $2.18 it was, it's now gone up to uh, $2.29, but this is new Pro Mini 80 Mega 328, 5 volts, 16 megahertz. Uh, that's all a load of old nonsense. $2.29, free shipping, and this one is for from E4 Worlds. And uh, this one is the thinner one, and it's correspondingly cheaper. So again, uh, new Pro Mini 80 Mega 328, 5 volts, 16 meg is relevant, so it's worth reading that. The rest is not. Uh, just $1.88 free shipping, and this one's from Sale for Women, but this one is the one on that very thin board. Right, let's go here next because I think this is also related. So uh, let's open this one. Okay, let's have a look. Uh, yeah, so these are four pin female headers, uh, long pin, they're gold in color, so could they possibly be gold plated? Maybe. Let's get in a bit closer. Yeah, so these are the uh, four pin uh, female, sort of Arduino style female headers into which you can plug plugs. Uh, now I particularly wanted these for, well anything really I squared C. So my little OLEDs plug into there neatly. Uh, I just noticed this one is really bent up. Yeah, so what I want to do with these is somehow arrange for these pins to be bent in such a way that I pick off ground, VCC, A5, and then A4. So these two top pins are going to have to be twisted round in some way, uh, just so that I can plug the OLED uh, and have it sort of uh, sitting on the Pro Mini sandwich together, probably fairly closely. Uh, and this is going to be for my little Ameter project using the INA219. So these are 20 pieces, four pin female tall, or long pin in other words. Uh, stackable, I'm not sure whether they are stackable really, because I'm not sure that these pins fit terribly well into these uh, holes, but anyway. Header connector socket for Arduino shield, $1.82 for those 20, free shipping, and these came from Servi 2014. Right, one more, and this one is a Stahl oscillator free queue, uh, quite cheap, $3.67. I think I paid a bit more than that. Anyway, let's get that open. Yeah, this is um, a frequency counter kit, I think. Yeah, well, it's definitely a kit. And uh, we've got some pins sticking through the plastic, and uh, that's one of the LED displays, I think. They do look very bent, so it wasn't terribly well protected, this thing. But uh, yeah, this is a frequency counter and crystal tester. Um, it's based around a pick, actually. So there's a pick on there. It's got its own uh, crystal, which is 20 megahertz, I think, yeah five digit display, individual uh, single segment displays that fit on there. Um, but this also tests crystals. So you can put a socket here, I think it is, and put crystals into it and it'll um, tell you the frequency of the crystal. So I thought this was a really neat kit. Now I particularly want this because I want to be able to measure the frequency coming out of um, the PIC boards when I do my PIC microcontroller tutorials. And I thought this would be a good price uh, tool for testing the uh, frequency coming out, but also a general piece of you know lab equipment at a very good price. I thought this was a nice kit, so I'm going to be doing this kit really soon. Uh, let's have a look at those displays. Right, so 
Uh, those are displays, single digit displays. As I say, one of them does seem to have got a little bit bent, but that's uh, easily straightened. We can straighten that out and that will go onto the board. Here are the others. And here's the pre-programmed, I assume, uh, pick, which sits there which does the frequency counting. Now what's interesting is I've got a feeling this can count up to 50 megahertz, which is interesting because the uh, crystal for the pick is only 20 megahertz. So I think what happens is it is subdivided internally in a little hardware divider in the pick. Uh, something to do with the uh, capture compare device. Uh, so I think it's divided by four or eight or something like that. And then the pick measures the, um, the gap between the pulses or something so it can do it with a 20 megahertz crystal but yeah now this looks pretty straightforward it's just a pick lots of resistors for the leds uh, leds and a few resistors and capacitors and that crystal oh and a little um trimmer capacitor right so this item oh, this turned out really quickly actually it was 11 days i think since i ordered this so that's pretty good uh yes it's a 50 megahertz crystal oscillator frequency counter tester but it's also a crystal tester uh, DOI kit, five resolution, five digits is what they're getting at. Oh, there's a big picture of it. Um, right, so I bought this in pounds. I'm not quite sure why this was being sold in pounds because it has come from Hong Kong. Uh, £3.51, $4.51, uh, sorry, no, trending at four fifty one. So $4.32 is the equivalent of what I paid, £3.51. I just thought that was a really good price for what you get. Um, uh, free shipping, and this came from Buy Dot Flying. So these are today's post bag items. Now, post bag items are funded uh, entirely from donations by my Patreon patrons. So I just want to say massive thanks to everyone who donates via Patreon. And if you would like to donate uh, even a tiny amount, a dollar a month via Patreon, I'll put the link here. So that you can do that. Um, share, like, subscribe and all that stuff as well. Cheerio.